Hello everyone! Thank you for joining us for our second week of our online printing tutorials. If you haven't seen these before, this is our second week of a six week program. So each Tuesday we release an online printing tutorial taking you step by step how to block print a certain product um, or project. So this project this week is um, our botanical cushion cover. So this cushion cover is absolutely gorgeous. It's one of our most popular designs. This is perfect for outside in the garden or for inside the house. And I'm gonna be showing you how to print this, uh, the tips you need to know, a couple of bits of um, important information, and then also to show you how I lay it out um, and how I get this lovely finished result. So you're gonna watch this video and then you'll feel confident enough to go and have a go at home. So I'm gonna show you what I'm using. Now we have a kit which is called our Botanical Cushion Cover Printing Kit. This comes with everything you need to print this cushion. So it's £35 and we sell it online. Or you may already have some of these bits. So I'm going to show you what we use and then you can get any bits that you need or dig them out the back of the cupboard. So our kit comes in one of our nice block printed bags which is really nice as well. So that's nice to keep it in. And in here you've got a foam mat. So that's what you're going to be using inside your cushion cover you've got your printing block so the printing blocks we're using is like a small little embellishment block if you can see that and our large botanical cow parsley which is so popular it's really beautiful design and it looks gorgeous on the cushion cover and um, what else you've got in here is your two paints you've got midnight blue and textile solid white and i'll talk you through the paints in a minute you've got two sponges um, an instruction leaflet and then also you've got your cushion cover so this cushion cover, we only sell in the kit. Uh, we source these from Ikea. They are fantastic quality. They print so nicely and they're really good for inside and outside. Um, but like I said, we only sell them in the kit. I tried to order some more of these and delivery wasn't till May. So if you don't want to get the kit and you don't have a cushion cover, maybe try and source your own. I'm sure places like Dunelm or just online and things, you'll be able to get a blue blank cushion cover. Just cotton, it doesn't really uh, matter what sort of material, just a blank one. Um, or whether you've got anything old at home or anything, you can try that. But yeah, you just need to find yourself a cushion cover. Uh, a couple of bits of um, equipment that you'll also need to add is a paint tray and some practice fabric and then the colors that we're using. So we're using midnight blue and white, so white solid paint. Now the paint's really important that you're using. Because I'm printing onto a dark fabric, our normal block craft white paint wouldn't show up. So I've used my textile solid, which is specifically for dark fabric. So when you're printing something like this, you need to make sure you've got the white that is suitable for dark fabric. The midnight blue luckily shows up really well on here, um, but it's quite a strong colour, whereas our normal white didn't, so I'm using my textile solid, um, so make sure you've got that. And then in terms of practice fabric, you want to find something as similar to your cushion cover as you can. So it wouldn't be any good printing on white or, or cream fabric because your white paint wouldn't show up. So I've got this blue fabric, which is almost identical to my cushion cover. So that's gonna be perfect to practice printing on too. So if you can find anything, even an old t-shirt that's dark, an old tea towel, just any old scrap fabric, even a dark cushion cover or something, I mean, or old pillowcase, just something so you're gonna be able to see the two colors blend together on your practice fabric. So that's just an important tip. So see if you can find something like that. Now I'm going to set up my printing table and I'll be back in a minute and show you how to print this. Right, so I've set my table up for printing. I've poured my paint colours out, so my midnight blue and my white. Now you will notice that the white is a thicker paint than the midnight blue. It's just because it's a different sort of fabric paint. And like I said earlier, specifically for dark fabrics. So it's a little bit of a stronger paint, but they still work really well together. I've got my practice fabric and my mat underneath me. Um, so just always make sure that you have that set up. Um, like we always say, if you don't have a foam mat, maybe a yoga mat or something, uh, something with a bit of give so you've got something soft to print on top of. And my practice fabric. Now, as we always say, your practice fabric is so important. Um, I just got a small square here, but if you were feeling cautious, you could 
uh, cut a piece of practice fabric the same size as your cushion cover so I think it's 45 by 45 so that you could really lay out the whole um, design but as long as you just have a go on here and feel confident with the block because I print the cushion cover quite free flowing you don't need to practice it completely uh, it's slightly different if you're doing straight lines or something now with this design it's all about blending the two colors so it's all about blending the white and the blue together now sometimes people are cautious about using two colors but this block lends itself perfectly to do a dip one color up here and a different color here so that's what we're going to be practicing on this so i'm gonna dip my sponges in the paint and give them a good tap off just so they absorb a little bit of the paint and don't have any thick blobs on top now with this I'm going to just tap my white. Now, I use my white just on the top where the kind of blossom bit is. I try to stick to that as much as possible. So a layer of white and then my blue. And now with the sponges, you can be quite precise because you can kind of use the corners of the sponges. So, but don't worry if it does overlap slightly. That just adds to the effect. So I might go on with a little bit more white. So you've got that. Hopefully you can see. And then what I'm going to do, turn that upside down and give it a wiggle. So just to give it that side to side movement that you need. I've got a flat hand with this design because it's quite big. And there we go. And that, that's come out so nice. I'm really happy with that. You can see the really nice white at the top and the blue and then the slight blend in the middle. And that's all you want to keep trying on here. Now with my cushion, I kind of twist and turn them all around. So I don't want to practice anything too regimented, but what I'm going to do is just have a couple of goes at this, making sure that I'm getting the blend in right and the block is working well. I just have a couple of practices with this. And just practice trying to change the direction of the block. Sometimes it's quite hard because we like to do everything the same. But if you look, I did that one that way. So I think, right, I'm going to do this one slightly different. And you do have to think about it, especially when you're printing it, you know, over and over again. Make sure you are changing the direction of it. So just keep having a go on here, getting confident. And watch how I keep changing the direction. Now, a tip with this design is because you've got quite a long, thin stem, be careful not to push that in too hard because on this one, it's slightly smudged because I pushed it quite, quite firmly. So I'm going to push the top a little bit harder and the bottom a bit lighter. And there we have it. This one before was a bit splodgy, whereas this one's come out really nice and clear. So make sure, again, you have a practice just getting the right um, kind of pressure for the block so you're not smudging any of it. Now, I'm very happy with those ones. They've all come out really nice. And the next step would be to use my embellishment block. Now, this is just a little spotty design. And we use this just to fill up the gaps. It just adds something different and extra to your design. You know, it's slightly like a blossomy design. So it works really well with this. So I'm just going to practice putting it in between, dotting it around. So I'm feeling confident with the design that I'm going to do on my cushion cover. And what you can keep doing is just don't forget to keep wiping your block down, you know, getting any uh, thick blobs of paint out of any detail so that it keeps printing really clearly. But I'm really happy with that. My practice has turned out lovely. All the blocks are printing really nice and you've got this lovely colour mix. So I'm going to get my cushion cover now and give it an iron first so there's no crinkles in it. And then we'll move on to printing the cushion cover. So I have done my practice fabric. I'm really happy with the designs. I'm feeling confident with it and I can see the colour mixing is working really well. So once you've done that and you're feeling happy, you're ready to move on to your cushion cover. 
So I've ironed this. You don't need to wash it or anything. Um, our blocks work and the paints work really well, you know, onto, onto all fabric. So I haven't washed this or anything. It's just come straight out of the packaging. And what you need to remember is your foam mat must go inside the cushion. Now we put it inside so that the paint doesn't go through to the other side. But you need to remember to just keep moving this around so you're always printing on top of the foam mat. So I'm going to start in my top left hand corner. I'm printing upside down so you can see. But my mat is here. Now this fabric is slightly heavier than my practice fabric. So when I print, I'm going to hold the block down for a couple of seconds longer to ensure the paint takes. Now, sometimes with thicker, thicker and heavier fabrics, people think it doesn't work as well. But because the, you know, the fabric and the thread is heavier, you need to allow more time for the paint to soak in. So I'm going to tap my colours on. And then I'm going to start here in the top corner. And then I'm going to hold it down and I'm going to hold it down for, say, five or six seconds or even longer. Just making sure you're really giving it a good wiggle at the top, not pressing too hard on the stem. And just all over, hold it down for a good few seconds and then up. And hopefully you can see there that came out really nicely. Now, with this design, you just want to remember to keep free flowing it. Keep moving it around as you print so that they're not all facing the right direction. And then you'll get a really beautiful kind of scene of cow parsleys. So just have a rough think. So that one went there. That one's going to go there. That one's there. You know, just move it around. And, you know, it doesn't matter if they're going to be quite close together. You'll see when I start printing. But I'm not too worried about how close together they are. I want a nice gap so I can fit the little embellishment block in between. But just keep moving them round. So I'm going to print this. I'm going to speed it up. And then you can see how I lay my cushion cover out. So my blog was getting a little bit blobby from using it so many times. So I'm just going to use my dry cloth, rub it back down again, get all the paint out of the detail that's kind of stuck in there. And then you've got a bit of a blank, clean canvas to work on again. So it's going really well so far. So you can see I keep twisting and changing it. And it doesn't matter if you think, oh, no, those two are the same. Kind of they're quite similar next to each other. But once you get the whole overall pattern together, you'll really see the design build. Now, when I've been printing this, I have noticed, and one thing I think I should point out, is that I always have the zip of my cushion at the bottom. So I've kind of, you know, doing all mine going up. Now, what I haven't done is I haven't done any upside down. For me, I just don't feel that that works. I want them all kind of going up, still twisting and turning, but I want them going up. I've done some to the side, but I haven't done any upside down. And I just think that keeps the design looking a little bit smarter. Now, when you get to kind of your last few prints, do think carefully about how you can print you know fit them in you just don't want to suddenly run out of room but i think i've got enough room to do another one there so i have printed my cow parsley all over as you can see, I've twisted and turned it and you've got the really nice colour mixing. So I'm really happy with how it looks. So the next step would be to add your little embellishment block. Now with this block, I just tend to use it to fill in the gaps, which just kind of adds a little bit more to the design. So that's what I'm going to do now. 
I always uh, wait till I finish the cushion before I add the little one in so that you can see where all your spaces are. And now I have finished my cushion cover. So I'm going to take my foam mat out and I'm going to leave this just on the table to dry for about half an hour to an hour. Make sure it's completely dry. Then you could turn it over and do the other side. I have actually done the other side. So I'm going to wait for this to dry. Then I'm going to iron it all over with a hot dry iron to set the paint. And I'll come back and show you the finished item. And here I have my finished cushion cover. So once I let it dry for an hour, I then heat set it. So ironed all over the surface with a really hot iron and that heat will set the paint and make it totally washable. So this is now permanent and washable at 40 degrees or under and you can put it in with all your other stuff. Now the cushion cover was a uh, 50 by 50 and I've put a 52 by 52 pad in. So it's really puffy and really cushy. Um, so I'm really excited to put this on the sofa um, and also it can be perfect for my garden table and chairs. Now, if you want to have a go at this, remember I said that you can only get the cover in the kit. If you want to source your own, just see if you can find anything, um, you know, online, kind of Amazon or Dunelm. I know lots of people don't like using Amazon. So just see if you can find a kind of textile shop or if you can buy any blank fabric, you could hem it up. It's just a really simple cushion cover. So you could hem that up and then print it yourself. So that's all ready. Now, once you finish printing, don't forget to wash your blocks. Wash them under the tap with hot soapy water and a nail brush just to get all the paint out the detail. And then you can dry them off and put them away in the cupboard for next time. And on the rest of our blog, I'm going to be showing you um, other colour ways that you can do this and also other printing ideas that you can do with kind of the botanical cow parsley and also a whole range of our other botanical blogs. So please make sure you check that out. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.